Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. This is Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Brightpath. Here in episode 221, I have an interview with Jeremy Bauman. Jeremy is the managing partner of Corporate Security Advisors, whose tagline is the business of security. Jeremy and I will talk about the challenges in today's security environment, the role that Corporate Security Advisors plays in advising and guiding their clients, and the origin story of how CSA came to be. With that as background, here's my interview with Jeremy Bauman. All right, with me today is Jeremy Bauman from Corporate Security Advisors, who is with us last episode talking about Global Security Operations Centers. And now in episode 221, we're going to talk about Jeremy's company, Corporate Security Advisors. So Jeremy, for those that might be tuning in for the first time, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I'll move on to asking about your company. Well, Brian, first of all, thanks for having me back. Uh, mm-hmm. Appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. Uh, Jeremy Bauman, I'm President Managing Partner of Corporate Security Advisors. Uh, we are a boutique consulting firm uh, that provides strategic security consulting to Fortune 1000 and, and healthcare organizations. Uh, for me, my background, I've been doing this for a little better than 25 years. I started out in local law enforcement had the opportunity to move my career into the corporate security environment and moved up through the ranks, ultimately worked for a global uh, pharmaceutical company, did just about everything you could uh, within the corporate security realm from security operations, internal investigations, crisis management, business continuity, systems and technology, all of the security programs you could think of, and then had the opportunity to go be head of enterprise security for a large financial services firm uh, based in the United States, but with a global footprint. So um, after that, I had the uh, opportunity to launch CSA. We'll talk a little bit more about mm-hmm. that, I think, uh, later on in the conversation, but uh, have been now in the consulting space for a little more than the last five years and um, really loving the uh, the impact that we can have on our client organizations. CSA's tagline or motto, however you want to think about that, is the business of security, which I've always found interesting uh, because it aligns with how I think about the need for a resilience program to be aligned and support the overall business objectives. What what does that mean to you and your and your partner, Brad, when it comes to? I mean, you've got it right front and center on your website, right? Corporate security advisors, the business of security. What, What does that mean to you? Well, I think to to me and and Brad as well, uh, and Brad's got a tremendous background. I think everybody in the corporate security world knows knows Brad and his background. Uh, Vice President, Chief Security Officer with a a major retailer, a couple of different stints with the the FBI, uh, serving in both uh, a uh, an agent role and uh, in an executive leadership role within the organization. Uh, Our our shared concept with regard to how we build security programs is to align those with the the overall business and i think that's where what we see a lot of organizations struggle where we see a lot of opportunity to help organizations is to have them understand how various programs are going to uh, positively impact their business objectives So whether you're looking at an organization's 10K risks and how a security program can impact those, whether you're contributing contributing to the uh, regulatory compliance for uh, various programs, whether it's compliance with various SEC guidelines or IRS tax obligations, when your security program is aligned with the protection of uh, people, environment, assets, and reputation in terms of what the organization's focus is, that's where you really start to to have value within the organization and contribute to those business objectives. And you cast yourself then as a business leader who's business-minded and you gain credibility and access to resources to be able to to do uh, the things that you know need to be done from the protection of an organization's perspective. How did you wind up founding CSA? I mean, there's got to be a good origin story to all this. How, how did that happen? So uh, honestly, I had gone through two different CEO transitions and I had watched organizations who were investing very heavily in security programs uh, shift to a new direction uh, where they wanted to make cuts 
in uh, the security risk and controls environments and turn organizations into you know, what I like to, to call a flying gas tank. And I think that was after, after going through two different experiences where we saw you know, these incredible teams that myself and my leadership teams had the opportunity to put together. I decided that I could make a much more meaningful impact uh, on organizations around the world by putting together our own team and by going in and helping organizations who had those needs within security understand those business objectives to be able to, to maintain that audience, not with just one organization that I worked with, but with all of the client organizations that we could work with. What time, what's a typical engagement kind of look like for CSA? Like where do you usually start and how, how does that evolve over time? Yeah, that's a great question. It, most of the time we get pulled in uh, from an assessment standpoint. Mm -hmm. That's usually the beginning point. Not always the case, but most often we're brought in to, to conduct an outside assessment of an organization. And whether you're a security leader or whether you're a business executive who has some oversight of security, having an outside assessment done of your security controls environment is, is almost imperative today on a three to five year cycle. You need some external validation of the work that's being done internal to the organization to understand what you, uh, what you need to change, what you need to do differently. And even if you're not going to make any changes to validate what you might be doing so that when you do have some kind of event happen and all organizations have them, that you can point back to that outside assessment uh, so that you can demonstrate you had a, a legally defensible security program. Mm -hmm. Most often we're coming in then doing a program level assessment. And uh, for us, we're not uh, typically engaged to come in and evaluate if you've got cameras in the right positions and card readers on the right doors. We're talking about, do you have the right security strategy? Do you have the right security organizational structure? Do you have the right skills uh, in terms of the, the people who staff your security team? Uh, do you have the right systems and technology in place for your organization? Uh, and do you have the right processes in place to be able to make sure that you understand what's happening in your environment and you can put the right risk mitigation strategies in place that are in line with your organization's risk tolerance? We help a lot of organizations understand what their risk tolerance is. Uh, we help a lot of organizations define the current state and the future state of the maturity of their programs. Where are they today and where would they like them to go? And that's usually where we're going to start engaging with an organization is in some way, shape or form, helping them understand uh, that current state assessment. Mm -hmm. it, you know, fr from there, uh, we typically have a life cycle. We move on into uh, strategic roadmap development uh, in terms of getting that strategy developed to advance security objectives in line with the needs of the organization and to, uh, to get consensus developed by the leadership of an organization to support that strategy and to be able to resource that strategy. We'll advance that on into to business planning, developing a business case, uh, in some cases, a specific organizational restructure for uh, the security program, figuring out where security needs to report within an organization, figuring out what the governance needs to look like for the overall security program to approve uh, assets, to approve policy decisions, and to be able to provide that, that oversight of the program itself. Uh, we move on into executive recruiting and coaching. So there there is a large expectation gap that can exist between many executive leaders and and what they can and should expect uh, from their security leadership so we help calibrate for those executive leaders what those expectations uh, should be we've uh, we've built up a, a great team of of experts uh, over the years and now can put some of the best security leaders uh, in front of these executives to, to help them understand the caliber of individuals that they should be able to expect uh, when they go out and, and design uh, an organization, when 
they recruit for that security leader that they want to, to run their operation. And then moving all the way into to implementation, we can certainly help design specific programs. Nothing we do is cookie cutter. Uh, everything we do is, is bespoke, custom to, to each individual client. So understanding the, the organization, the culture, the, the financial status of the organization, what the risks are, and then divide, designing those programs to be able to, to mitigate risk to the appropriate level in line with risk tolerance in those mm-hmm. organizations. What do you think the most valuable thing is that CSA does for its clients? Like what the client walks away from an engagement because it's over. What do you think they that most valuable thing they saw out of that that, that you guys have brought to the table? At a macro level, I, I would say the the understanding the right level of investment. I mean, simply put, most of our organizations, our client organizations come away with additional financial resources for their security program. Uh, in some cases, we've helped client organizations uh, understand where they're investing too much money, where they can pull back in, in terms of the level of investment. Most of our clients are on the other end of the spectrum. They, they aren't investing enough. Uh, they may have had another consulting firm come in and uh, I, I will tell you, in the competitive consulting landscape and security right now, there's a, a ton of individuals, a ton of individual consultants who have this toolkit of, of gates, guards, guns, uh, as we like to say, cameras. Better camera lenses, Jeremy. Yes. You know, if we invest a million dollars in cameras, then most certainly we will be able to have better pictures of the bad thing happening so that when... Uh, you know, discovery happens, there's great video of our team not performing adequately. Uh, So can we please install better cameras and not be able to do anything with those cameras to stop bad things from happening? We help our clients understand where they can stop bad things from happening. And it's not to say that you might not need a better video system installed in your organization, but you've got to calibrate that around what is that going to prevent? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll give an example without naming the client. We had a client organization where we met with the CEO who had just invested millions of dollars in a new camera system. And as we were doing the assessment, we found that they weren't doing any remote storage of the video coming off of the cameras. And they also didn't have anyone who was monitoring the cameras. Essentially, they had installed windows that nobody was looking through. Um, And... That was because the lack of a strategy behind the the overall video system itself and behind what the security program was trying to accomplish. So we had to help that particular organization understand if they were going to make those investments, they also had to make the investment in either live monitoring or if they only desired to use those cameras for an investigative tool to be able to go back and unpack what happened then they had to be recording that or processing that with some kind of software, integrating that with their access control so that they could have some sort of linkage between an alarm and a video. And thus understanding what they tr- were trying to accomplish, you know, what was the bad thing they didn't want to happen anymore? Then we can help them design the tool set and understand the level of investment it's going to take, you know, and if, If we can help them understand that the solution to their problem is $500,000, then they may choose to make that investment and solve it. Mm -hmm. If the investment to solve that problem is $100 million, they may choose to accept that risk. And that's how business leaders are making decisions every day. So the big thing that we're helping organizations uh, with is getting those budgetary approvals. Uh, And I think the... This year, we had the, the highest budgetary approval of any one of the the history of the company. We helped the client organization get uh, access to over $100 million in additional funds between operating expense and, and capital over a five-year look. And that's, a, that's an incredible increase in investment for the organization, but it was a testament to the extremely detailed work that our team did in terms of business planning Mm -hmm. and the work that we did presenting to the executive committee and the board for that organization to help them understand what the specific risks were, what the specific mitigation strategies were that would offset those risks, uh, and why we were recommending certain strategies over others. Mm 
uh, there's a lot of debate now about various risk mitigation strategies that uh, aren't doing much more than window dressing. And so, you know, we can talk with our clients pretty openly about what strategies should be in terms of order of importance for their organization based on our understanding of their environment once we dig in. You mentioned the competitive landscape, and I know there's a lot of different security firms out there from solo practitioners all the way up to multi-billion dollar, tens of thousands of people that kind of play in this space. Where's CSA fit in that? Like, What sets your firm apart from these other companies that are out there? Well, I think that that gets back a little bit to our to our origin story and mm-hmm. sort of my frustration as a practitioner was that I felt like I had to have 80 different vendors uh, on staff to be able to to consult. I had, had to have one vendor for systems and technology consulting. I had to have another vendor for threat assessment. I had to have another vendor for kidnap and ransom consulting. I had to have another vendor for, you know, uh, business continuity and crisis management consulting. And so as... Uh, as Brad and I uh, envisioned what we wanted from CSA, we wanted CSA to be that one-stop shop for our customers, where we could literally be that virtual security team for our clients. And in some cases, that's what we provide. We'll provide an interim CSO, we'll provide the entire virtual security team. And so we've staffed CSA through various uh, team members and relationships that we've got in a way that we can give our clients access to the top expertise in every aspect of corporate security. And, and that's what we've worked so hard to develop is, you know, whether uh, it's specific industry verticals and having diverse experience across different industry verticals, whether it's specifics in investigations or workplace violence uh, prevention, whether it's uh, threat assessment program design, business continuity, crisis management, GSOC, working through uh, strategy development, business planning, organizational design, executive recruiting. We've built up a team of professionals that can help an organization in just about every aspect on the strategic side of security. And we also, we don't do a lot of the tactical stuff. That's, we have sort of carved our niche out in helping with the strategic aspects and so, you know, as I said, we're probably not the right firm to be able to tell you where your cameras and card readers need to go. We partner with a firm who does a great job of that. And quite honestly, we'll do it for free if you buy the cameras from them. Mm-hmm. So that's one of those things where we recommend that our clients don't pay for that type of consulting um, unless it's part of a larger strategic program. Because there's organizations out there who, um, who will do it at, at little or no cost. Uh, for the investment you're going to make in those capital uh, items. So mm-hmm. where, where is it that you see companies struggle with security? I mean, when you are you come in looking at a company from the outside and help them through this evaluation process figure out where they need to go to improve, what are the things that you often see that are missing? The, the biggest thing that they're missing is, is the, <laughs> and I, I talk about this, I've talked about this for years with, with people on my team, you know, the, the old analogy of the jar that has the rocks and the marbles and the sand in it, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, if, if you take your jar and you fill it up with sand, then there's no, no room left for the rocks or the marbles. But if you, you fill it up with rocks and, and, and then you take your marbles, you can, you can fill in a few marbles around the rocks and, and then you can fill in a, uh, more sand around the rocks and the marbles. Um, most of the organizations that, that we see that are struggling with security they filled their jar up with sand. They're worried about, you know, the the officers and their performance of the the officers. They're not thinking about it from the rocks perspective. And for us, the rocks are, what's the governance structure for security at the executive level? Who is providing oversight? How is that linked to your cybersecurity governance strategy? How is that linked to your enterprise risk management uh, and and the appropriate governance there? What is the overarching security strategy and is that committed to paper and is that approved by your executive leadership? You ask many security leaders out there, what's your security strategy? And they'll rattle off a couple of core tenets, but the, they haven't gone through the process of getting that approved. Mm-hmm. They haven't gone through the process of documenting that, of getting consensus on the part of their security team, of aligning their security team behind that strategy, of presenting that to executive leadership, of incorporating the feedback from executive leadership, 
and then uh, going through that feedback loop of constantly refreshing that strategy. So not having a, a long-term business case. Uh, most security programs from a financial aspect are driven year to year by their finance teams coming to them and telling them, you know, whether they need to be flat to plan over last year or whether there's a 10% task over last year. They don't have their own independent long-term financial plan or business case to, to be able to understand and gain approval for the resources they need to meet the objectives that they're trying to, to lay out uh, mm-hmm. and accomplish. And, you know, it, it was in one of the roles that I, I worked in uh, starting, gosh, about 15 years ago, where ultimately our security leadership team came to the, the idea that we needed to separate out the operational aspects from the program development aspects from the planning aspects. And so we restructured the security team so that, and what wound up being my team was responsible for that strategic planning function. So you've got folks who are helping that traveler in need when they're stuck in Turkey after a bombing at the international airport. But who do you have that's working on designing that program? Because if you're constantly helping people who have these imperative needs, it's really hard to focus on the program design aspects. And so organizations that take the time to either dedicate headcount towards those planning aspects or to be able to bring in a firm like ours to be able to help them understand what they should be doing from a strategic planning focus, those are the organizations that are getting it right. Mm -hmm. And so that's both where we see organizations maybe missing an opportunity And, you know, organizations who are doing it right and how they're capitalizing on that. And those are the organizations you see who have access to resources, who are able to get approval for their projects, be able to get the financial resources they need, be able to get the people they need, be able to recruit the talent that they need at the right levels and and really drive that the overall success for their organizations and in the security area. Jeremy, thanks for joining us today. Where can folks go to learn more about corporate security advisors? The best way to uh, to learn more about us is our website. That's at corporatesecurityadvisors.com. And all the the information that you need to to track us down is there. All right. Thanks for coming on the podcast again. Thanks for having me, Brian. (laughs) That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.